hello everybody and welcome to my next tutorial uh, this tutorial you're going to be learning about enemy and player collisions and um it, it's very simple to get used to uh there's just some things that i just have to show you and in the next tutorial we're going to be making our code better and more object oriented because the way we've been even though I said it's not going to be complicated, it's good to learn object-oriented properties because C++ can indeed be an object-oriented language, right? So in order for us to make it object-oriented, there's some things that we have to change. Um, if we don't make it object-oriented, then it becomes procedural, and procedural is um, procedural could be good for smaller games. It could work for this game that we're making, but we want to make it object oriented so it's more flexible and we can add more stuff to it. And if you don't know what procedural languages are, um, an example is Turing. Um, basically, procedural languages go step by step. Like, uh, if you want to use something, um, in a program, say a function in a program, it always has to be. It, it can't be it's not in different sections of code and classes and stuff such as C++ it goes in order so if you put if you want to use a function in your program it has to be at the very top of your program and then you do everything below it so it's like a procedure it goes from one step to the next step to the other step and so on and so forth we don't want our program to be like that so we that's where we use object oriented programming with classes and inherit and all that stuff but we're not using all the object oriented properties such as inheritance and all and polymorphism but we're using encapsulation and stuff to make it easier we're just using one set of object oriented properties anyways uh let's get into the code so Let's go to enemy.h. <laughs> Let's um, make five integer functions, okay? Uh, one is to get the amount of enemies variable that we have up here. And the next one is to get the x, to get the y, and to get the x2 and the y2. And then the parameters you see int index and index and index and int index. So what am I talking about? Now the x and the y, you notice that they have an array of ten. So we have to let the we have to let the program know, the compiler know which index of the array that we're referring to, right? So that's why we have that in the parameters. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about encapsulation. Since these are private variables, we cannot access them using other classes. So the only way to access them is to make a public function with a get um so we can basically a get function so we can get the the values of the of the certain variable that we want to get from. Sorry. And if you've never coded in C sharp, C sharp has an amazing way to do this. I really like C sharp for doing that, but it's there's a simple way to get around it in C also, and this is good also. So let's go to enemy.cpp and let's go to int enemy get amount of enemies. We just return the amount of enemies. And if you don't know about return values and stuff and functions, learn the basics and then come back. So um, we get their get x um get x function and in the parameters in an index and our returning is the x and the index of the array that we want okay and same with the y and the now for the x two you're gonna see x plus width remember in our enemies uh when we created our enemies that we had a specified width um in our text file and the x um, and the x position and stuff, right? So not all the enemies are going to be the same size. So the x2 values aren't going to be the exact same. So to find out the x2, you just have to put x plus the width of the object of or of the enemy, and that will give you the x2 value. So just we have to just return x plus the width, and same with the y2. We just have to return a y plus the height, and we'll get the height of the enemy. So let us go to our collision.cpp. Uh, 
Oh, sorry. Let's go to collision at h. Sorry. We create a ep collision function in the parameters is a player ampersand player enemy ampersand enemy. And let's go to collision dot cpp. Now this is a very fairly short function, so it should be easy enough. So we use a for loop um to loop through all the enemies that we have, right? And we notice we use the get amount of enemies function that we created. So we say if the player x is greater than the the x position of the enemy, the current enemy that we're searching through through our for loop, and the index is the i, right? So if the player x is greater than the um the x two position of the first enemy and all that stuff for the first enemy right here this is all basic stuff then there's no collision I shouldn't have to explain this because we've looked at this in early tutorials and then if there is a collision then you just lose a life right now I haven't set anything like when you lose a life the screen will go black or you'll start over or no checkpoints and never put any of that yet right because um we're gonna add that stuff later and then when we come to like when you get to zero lives then it's gonna be game over then i'll bring to the menu screen right but we're not at the screen management and stuff yet so right now we're just gonna decrease the players lives right so all we have to do with this is just go to the update function and uh, note that the update function has an additional thing the parameter enemy and percent enemy and that's before the map that's what I put you can put it after before it doesn't matter whichever one you want to do and I put it right here put in the player and the enemy so in the collision dot h for the update you have to add the enemy and percent enemy there as a reference variable so let's go to our main.cpp. Now let's go to the top. Include the S stream for now. Okay. And let's scroll down to the update. So in the collision.update, we need to add the enemy variable right here before the map or wherever you put it in the parameters. And right down here before the camera.draw, we put string stream, we name it str. And we put the str to the player dot lives, and then we draw the amount of lives to the screen so we can see how much lives we have. And let's go to back to our player dot h. I forgot to tell you that we included a new variable called lives. And in our in our initialize function, we set our lives equal to five, so we have five lives initially. Okay, so that should be it for the program. So if I click Control F5 to run my program and I click yes. Oh I forgot to get rid of these. So as you can see at the top you see we have five lives. Now if I touch the enemy you see the lives went down. Now it went down a lot because uh the lives went down quite a lot because since I'm just touching the enemy the amount of time the amount of frames that go by that fast it like your lives decrease accordingly so it's kind of hard to explain but if you notice that when we move across the screen that the life stays the same right it stays at the same spot at ten, at the position 10 10 so in order to keep the lives on the screen on the current top left corner of the screen we'll have to deal with the camera class in order for that to happen but more on that later i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks for watching this and bye